Great. Um, let's just very quickly, what, what do you mm -hmm. argue in the book to kind of get that out of the way and then really get into the book? Itself? Sure. Yeah, I think so. There, there are, are really several arguments throughout the book. Um, first and foremost, I knew that, um, you know, there was, there, there was a long held tradition in the Valley that um, either slavery didn't exist mm -hmm. at all, or that the slavery that existed in the Valley looked a little bit different and enslaved people were treated better um, and so, you know, one of the one of the arguments of the book um, is that, first of all, slavery existed, and that's pretty easy to prove with census records. Um, but the other the other element of that argument is looking at um, how slavery really wasn't all that different in the valley as compared to other parts of Virginia or the South. Um, so, you know, one of the things that that kind of courses throughout. The, the narrative is, you know, yes, you don't have, you know, large enslavers, you know, 150, 250 enslaved people on plantations. But in terms of, um, you know, the, the emotions, the brutality that enslaved people confronted, um, it was pretty much the same in the Valley as it was elsewhere in the South. So that's, that's one of the themes that, that courses throughout the book. Um, also, one of the other uh, elements here is that, you know, during the course of the Civil War, the Valley's enslaved people, they were not passive participants. So again, I think there's this, there is this perception that, you know, enslaved people were just kind of sitting around and waiting for Union armies to come and liberate them. And that's simply not the case. I mean, they were, they were making, um, it was a very complex world they were navigating but ultimately, uh, they were performing all sorts of uh, tasks from, you know, labor tasks for the United States troops to, um, you know, espionage, intelligence gathering service in the United States color troops. Um, also, one of the other themes that courses throughout the book um, is that emancipation doesn't come at one moment. Huh. Um, so emancipation, it's, it's very contingent on, you know, proximity to federal forces and also on, you know, as to whether or not there are union forces um, in the area. And emancipation, you know, throughout uh, the course of the Civil War in the Valley, I argue, um, it, it's in a constant state of flux. Uh -huh. So you have, um, you know, for example, first six months of 1863, Robert Milroy's occupation, uh -huh. um, enslaved people there are emancipated. Um, they're, they're taking advantage largely of those opportunities. And then Milroy gets defeated, and then it's right back uh, to a, to a status as an enslaved person. So yeah, I mean it, it's it's constantly um, in a state of flux. So there's a there's a lot of, of of different things that course through it. And the other thing that I would mention that I argue is that the valleys enslaved were extremely pragmatic. Um, I don't believe, based on my research, that that the decision to flee, the decision to seek freedom was always an instantaneous decision. And I think there are some, some instances of that, but I think that the Valley's enslaved are keenly aware of what's going on um, and they, they, they are able to sense when they have the best opportunity uh, to escape and get out of the Valley to hopefully um, some point North where they can enjoy freedom.